Now we are through with the examination of the placenta, and I hope you enjoyed INS as she took you through how to turn the placenta at various stages, and then when you turn, it's exactly what you are looking out for. Now the cord, also known as the funnus, we have said that it's usually inserted in the center. It contains two umbilical arteries and one vein, and that was what you tried to look at. You can find the picture of the cord, and then you don't just see the vessels running, they are spiral and something is covering it called the Watson's jelly. And then the amnion, which is the transparent membrane, also goes upwards to cover the cord. Let's have a look at the cord. So this is the cord. You see the blood vessels running through this cord. And they are covered with the Watson's jelly. And this is the transparent amnion covering, covering this umbilical cord. On the side, you see the two veins and the artery, and these are the blood vessels she was looking out for. She must find this two and then find this one. Sometimes if one is missing, it denotes a renal problem in the child. In summary, the placenta is an organ formed in the uterus during pregnancy that provides the fetus of essential nutrients needed for the mother. from the mother. There is a need for the placenta to be examined after its delivery to ensure none is left in utero and to detect other abnormalities that may be present. The survival of the fetus depends on the efficiency and integrity of the placenta. These are the references and we've come to the end of examination of the placenta. So far we have been able to come from taking history, we've delivered the woman, we've carried out the third stage, we've examined the placenta, we know the fourth stage is basically about observations, which we have discussed in 235, and we will not display it over here. Now what we want to do again is to show you how to do a, a, a condom tamponade to arrest hemorrhage during postpartum hemorrhage. So if you're on the ward and they bring somebody who is bleeding seriously, you've given us the toxic is not going, you can also try the condom tamponade. And then you also learn how to administer the magnesium sulfate. If that's a big problem for most nurses, so you want, I want you to get how you administer magnesium sulfate. It is a special medication and it shouldn't be administered anyhow. It also has some serious complications. And yesterday, in last time when we were talking about, when we were discussing two, in 235, we said that you always have to have the antidote available before you administer the magnesium sulfate. And the antidote is calcium gluconate. So we'll be displaying how to administer the magnesium sulfate. You mix it, you give it to both doctors. How much should you give? What is the repeated dose? We will we'll be seeing that shortly. And then we also do a condom tamponade. Assuming I have washed my glove and done my sterile, my hands and done my sterile gloves, because this is a sterile procedure. We are coming to do the condom tamponade. This is done when every other measure to arrest PPH has failed. You have given your oxytocin infusion, you have massaged your uterus, you have expelled clots, and so your uterus is not contracting and the, your mother or your client is still bleeding. So before we start, you first of all clean the perineum. So you pick your swab on your swab stick and then you clean the perineum. You clean from top to bottom one, then you drop into your receiver. Then you take your second swab, you clean from top to bottom, then you drop it in your receiver. So I need a catheter. I have my catheter here with me and I have my condom. So to make the condom tamponade, you need to insert your catheter into your condom. This is our condom. And we have our catheter. So you insert your catheter into the condom, not too deep into the condom. So after I have inserted, I have to secure the condom onto the catheter. So with that, I have my suture. I can use any other suture at all. Vicryl, cardboard, any of them will do. 
So I secure my condom onto my catheter by tying, but not too tightly, to prevent occluding the canal in the catheter. So I am tying my condom. So I have finished tying. Now I pick my scissors. I cut the extra suture hanging around and I trim it perfectly so that it wouldn't be hanging around. Then I pick my condom and my catheter and I pick my scissors and then cut away the two-way entry to the catheter. So I am cutting it away. So you separate this from the main catheter. Now I need a giving set connected to an infusion because we need an infusion to inflate the condom when we insect it into the uterus. So I have my, uh, my giving sets already connected to the infusion. You can use any infusion at all, normal cell line, DNS, 5%, whichever one you have in your facility or whichever one is available, you use that one. So I connect my giving sets into the catheter. You fix it very well so that it doesn't come out so i have connected my giving set to the catheter and my catheter is tied securely into the condom i pick a forceps any long uh, forceps straight artery forceps or you can as well use an ovum forceps so you hold the condom with the catheter like this and then you get a speculum the speculum is to retract your perineal area to have a clear way so that you can insert your condom into the uterus so i pick my speculum i occlude the perineal area but then i have to let my clients know that i am about insecting the condom into the uterus. Okay, Auntie Ines, I'm coming to insect this into the uh, uterus, so please bear with me. It's uncomfortable, but we are trying to help prevent the bleeding. So you gently introduce this into the woman's vagina through the cervix into the uterus. So you can quickly remove your speculum. You should make sure that your condom is well secured into the uterus. Then I can regulate my infusion to bloat or fill the condom. You run it. You can give for about 250 sorry, to 500 ml of infusion this will help inflate the condom which in the end would put pressure at all the bleeding sites to prevent hair from bleeding further so i am running my infusion to bloat or inflate my condom You can as well fill the uterus whilst your condom is filling. You will feel that there is a bulging uh, thing when you fill it or you palpate the uterus. You can feel the uterus bulging, which is an indication that your condom is filling. But if you see a trickling fluid coming out, not blood per se, but it's kind of 
what you it should tell you that your condom tamponade is not well secured or there's a puncture somewhere or the infusion you are running is not going or it's not doing what it's supposed to do so you quickly check but our catheter is in situ perfectly and everything is fine assuming you have run your 250 to 500 mils of infusion and you think you are okay the uterus has been filled enough you can close your giving sets closer to the perineal area then you pick an artery forceps this time around an artery forceps then you clamp above the, give, the uh, regulator of the giving sets then you pick your scissors and you cut the giving sets the extra giving sets from the rest of the catheter you are clamping and cutting because you don't want any extra giving sets or infusion hanging around you want to trim everything and make everywhere needs and tidy as much as possible so we are done with insecting the condom tamponade you quickly clean your woman you thank her make her comfortable in bed and then you discard your trolley so I have everything set. I look around to see if I've left anything around my patients. All my things are back on my trolley. So I am done with my condom tamponade. I am taking my trolley away to discard my items. But then after everything, remember to document your findings. What you have done, you make sure you do it and record it into details for legal purposes. Thank you very much. We are coming to practice how to give magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is a mineral that is given to reduce or prevent seizures in mothers. This is given when a woman is, uh, has pregnancy-induced hypertension or with BIH but with severe symptoms. So with this, you can give it when the woman has BIH with severe symptoms or she has eclampsia or eminent eclampsia so we are going to give 14 grams of magnesium sulfate as our loading dose so this is magnesium sulfate it comes in 20 percent and 50 percent but with our loading dose which is the four grams of the 10 14 grams we are going to give we would have to withdraw 12 mils of aqua and then eight mils of the magnesium sulfate of the 20 percent i hope you get me this is a 20 percent magnesium sulfate to get the four grams that you are going to give iv you withdraw eight mils of this and then you add 12 mils of aqua so you can use a 20 cc syringe or in case you don't have a 20 cc syringe you can use 10 cc so with the 20 cc you can withdraw 12 mils of aqua and then you add your 8 mils of magnesium sulfate before you give magnesium sulfate you should make sure that you have secured two lines one with an infusion which should be ringus lactate not normal saline why because normal saline has a sodium content which would aggravate the woman's situation so you don't give normal saline you set up an a ringers lactate infusion you should also make sure that you have a catheter in situ our catheter is in situ so that you can be able to monitor the inputs and outputs rates of your clients this is because magnesium sulfates can have an adverse effect on the liver and the kidney if care is not taken 
So before you administer this, again, you should check your vital signs, paying more attention on the respiratory rate. So we have our aqua, and I have my 20 cc. I have checked my vital signs and I have recorded adequately. So I pick my magnesium sulfate. This one comes in far air, 10 mils. So I would be withdrawing eight mils of this magnesium sulfate. So this is eight mils of my magnesium sulfate. I have my aqua, so I'll be withdrawing 12 mils of this aqua to get my 14 grams of the magnesium sulfate. I need an extra aqua. Okay. So I have my four grams of magnesium sulfate so for my 10 grams to make to add up to make the 14 grams for the complete loading dose i would have to take five grams each i have a 10 mil cc so i can as well withdraw 10 mils of this and then change my needles and give five grams each each on alternate buttocks but ideally you should have a 5 cc syringe so that you can withdraw your 5 grams each to be able to give your alternate buttocks so i again pick my max sulfate okay so these two which is five grams each in this range gives me my 10 grams of magnesium sulfate for my im so i would leave that or put it aside pick my four grams of the magnesium sulfate which i'm going to give iv when you are giving the max of iv you have to take a set because you are going to give it very slowly so I have my seats and I explained the procedure to my clients I have explained to her she understands what I'm coming to do for her so I have her permission to go ahead 
My infusion is in situ and running well. My catheter as well. So I connect my medication to the cannula. So I'll be giving it slowly. In case I'm giving the IV max sulfate and my client tells me she's having palpitation, she can't breathe properly, all those indications should tell you that she's getting into crisis. So you quickly stop, call for help or you elect your doctor. But before then, I said earlier on that you should make sure you have your antidote, which is calcium gluconate available so with that you can manage the crisis in case she gets into one so i slowly give my iv medication slowly for over 20 minutes just because we don't want our clients to get into any crisis as we have all learned in our basic nursing when or pharmacology when you are giving an IV infusion you should take your time and give it slowly because your clients can have a cardiac arrest because the drug is going directly into the veins so we have finished giving our IV infusion I have finished giving my IV infusion I discard my syringe into the sharp box as per protocol. So now I'm coming to give the IM max sulfate. This is going to give her the 10 grams of the extra drug she needs to make her for the 14 grams she needs for her loading dose. So I have my swab in spirits. I have already changed my needles that I used in withdrawing the drug. So these are new needles. If you have a free needle, fine. But in case you don't have a free needle, you should get another fresh syringe and then you take off the needle and use that for your injection. So now I'll give it on alternate bottles. My client has been fitting, so she's kind of unconscious. So I'll call for help so that I can move my client to allow me give the IM injection. So I'll call on my colleague INS to come and help me move the client for my IM injection. I have my cotton wool swab with spirits with me. So you make space for yourself. Auntie Tina, please, I'm coming to give you injection at your Botox. It will pain you small, but please bear with me. We are trying to help. So with my colleague helping me, I position my clients, you locate your, you draw your quadrant and locate your outer quadrant. You clean from inside out, then you pick your first, uh, 5 grams of the 10 grams, then you give your IM. Okay. Then you discard your needle. Don't try recapping. So we turn again to the other side. I pick a new cotton wool swab with spirits. And again, we give the extra five grams of the max of you clean and then you give im at the outer quadrant and then you discard 
you thank your patient in case she's not hearing you or you feel she's unconscious she can as well hear you so you thank her for everything you make her comfortable in bed you discard your trolley and then you come back and check her vital signs again with the maintenance dose you give five grams each on alternate bottles for six doses before she completes the whole max of regimen so this is loading those for max sulfates with that you need 14 grams of the max sulfates where we have for the four grams we put 12 mils of aqua plus eight mils of the max sulfates and for the im injection you need 10 grams of the max sulfates so we withdrew five grams each in five cc syringe and then we gave on alternate buttocks in case your client gets into crisis again call for help ensure you have your antidotes available just in case